All right, guys. Um, so today, um, I'm briefly going to talk to you about uh, how your program is executed or how your program is run in Java. Okay, so it's going to be a brief um, tutorial. So as um, it was said in the previous video, um, is that Java is a portable programming language, meaning that uh, if you develop your application on the Windows machine, for example, you can still be able to run it on a, a Mac machine or a Linux machine without any trouble. So you have the same result. Uh, so since it's a platform independent programming language, and it's also what uh, people usually call uh, write once, uh, run always uh, programming language. Okay, so and um, Java, is a two-step execution um, programming language too, instead of one-step executions, execution. And um, so these two steps in the execution process are the compilation and then the execution part. So the compilation is dealt uh, by uh, a compiler, a compiler we, which is uh, an operating system independent uh, um, platform and then, the execution is dealt by um, the Java Virtual Machine, which is a custom build for every operating system. So let's talk about the compilation. What happens during compilation? What happens is basically that your source code, which is a Java file, is compiled. It goes through a compiler, and then after compilation, it is um, compiled into a machine independent encoded called a byte code. And um, so that means that each content, uh, the content of each class contained in your source file is going to be stored into a separate file after compilation. And uh, that file will have an extension of that class file. Okay. And then that leads us to the execution of your program but before just to recall that uh, these class files that have been generated by the compiler are independent of the machine or the operating system that you are using and uh, that allows these files to be run on any system out there so just like i said um, that's what makes java uh, really portable okay because uh, with these class files uh, being generated by the compiler and, uh, and then being uh, independent of the machine and operating system, it allows you to develop one application on uh, Windows, for example, and then if you go on Linux, you, you will still be able to run your application and uh, get the expected result, okay? And uh, so what happens during execution? Uh, so for in order for your program to run uh, during execution, um, the main class file, so that is the class that contains the main method, uh, is passed to your Java virtual machine for it to be executed. Okay, so it starts by passing your, your main class file to the Java virtual machine for it to be executed. And during that execution, your, your um, your program is going to go through three stages of execution, okay? So there are three main stages before the machine code is actually executed. That is before you can be able to see the output of your program on your screen or on your Java console. So the first stage is what is called a class loader. And in, in this stage of the execution, what happens is that the main class is loaded um, into the memory by passing its um, that class file to the Java virtual machine. So after the main class is being loading, loaded to the memory and uh, all the other classes um, referenced in our program, in your program is going to be loaded through the same class loader uh, stage. And after the class, loader stage, there's uh, another stage that is called the uh, bytecode verifier. So a bytecode verifier is actually there to check 
whether the instructions that you, you you've written in your source, source code are correct if there's no error or if these instructions would not uh, perform any uh, damaging actions okay so the bytecode of of, the, of all your classes that are referenced in your program are going to be inspected by that bytecode verifier and what it verifies is basically some of uh, the things like uh, whether the variables are initialized before they are used, whether the method calls, the method calls match the type of object references, you know, whether the local variable accesses a fold within the runtime stack, you know, all it, it will basically look for the errors uh, in your in your program. And just a, a reminder, uh, in in programming there are basically three types of errors. The, we have the syntax errors, the semantic errors, and the logical errors. So the, the syntax errors um, are actually caused by the fact that the syntax of the programming language is not being respected. So as soon as we hear syntax, we definitely know that it's talking about the structure. So Java has a certain structure that needs to be followed when writing the code. So these kind of errors would be like when you know, you forget to write the semicolon at the end of an argument or after initializing an, an, a variable, for example, uh, this would be a, uh, categorized as a syntax error, okay? Because there, the structure of the language, uh, the syntax of the language has not been respected. And the semantic error is due to uh, an improper use of um, program statements. So this has to do with the meaning. Like you've written a program and uh, the statement that you've written does not have any meaning in Java programming language, for example. And then the machine, when you try to run your program, you definitely get an error because Java would not know how to interpret that um, these statements that you've written. And, and then the third, type of errors that we have is um, the logical uh, error. And these errors are due to the fact that the specification um, of the language is not being respected. So talking about the stages, the last stage in uh, the execution of your code is uh, a stage called just-in-time compiler. So this is the final stage uh, that is encountered by your Java program. And uh, its job is to convert the loaded bytecode into a machine code. So for you to actually see the output of your program on your screen or on your Java console. So due to this, um, this uh, two-step execution process, so Java is considered to be, an in in considered to be a, a platform independent programming language. So, that means that the program, a Java program that you will write is actually going to be independent of the target operating system. So you don't need to worry about whether it's going to run on Mac, on Linux, or any other operating system since this has already been taken care of during um, execution. And also due to this two-step execution process, um, the execution time is way more than uh, a similar program written in a compiled uh, platform dependent program. That means uh, in a one-step execution process uh, will be much more faster than uh, a two-step uh, uh, execution process that uh, Java finds itself in. So, Thanks a lot for watching and I hope uh, this has been uh, informative and I hope to see you um, in the next video where we'll be talking about uh, some other uh, key features of Java. Thanks.